start a new chapter in our 30 year journey. If you notice the previous slide, there was a shield, and it was written Sima Nyangwanda since 1984. So the Simero factory was established in 1984 after discovery of hot springs at Mashuza. Some of you are aware of this information, uh, it's in our website. So that's where the factory is located at uh, the limestone deposits at Mashuza. And, and the story has evolved quite a lot uh, from, from then on. So why are we doing this? Why are we enhancing the brand? Why are we taking a different path from what it has been before? You should recognize that before, Simeroa had a capacity of 100,000 tons. This market demanded much more. In fact, Simeroa sold everything it produced before. And the deficit was met by uh, imported cement coming in, mainly from Uganda and a bit from Tanzania. At some point, even some Pakistani cement was coming in. So now that we've expanded the factory capacity to 600,000 tons, we've been able to build up some traction since 2015. Today, as we sit in this room, we are the dominant cement player in this market. We really are the market leaders. And it's important for us that not only are we market leaders in terms of market share, but even thought leadership when it comes to cement and construction. Like I said, it's been around for over 125 uh, years old. Uh, really, PPC is a market leader and a thought leader in terms of cement across Africa. Now, one of PPC's positioning is, when you look at PPC brands, or if you go to the website, you, you, you will read a tag that says, strength beyond the bag. PPC positions itself as a strength beyond the bag. So what does strength beyond the bag refer to? What it refers to is, PPC is working across different countries in Africa. PPC is in South Africa, Botswana, Zimbabwe, uh, Rwanda, of course, so wherever PPC is, PPC is involved a lot in, in the communities it operates in. It doesn't just come set up uh, cement factories and, and, and uh, produce cement, but we want to be involved in the communities wherever we are, who PPC is in these markets, into the Rwandan market. We're saying we've done these things all over Africa. We've been committed to communities all over Africa, and we want to do the same in Rwanda, where we are operating as with Simero. Because the, this, the whole cycle of coming from Bugarama to here is a 12 hour, and then going back is a 12 hour. So you'd expect your cement if it's really quick, if, if, if there was a, a, an order made and immediately they executed at the plant, you'll probably get your cement after 14 hours. Given the 12 hour worth of leg just on the road, another hour of loading, another hour of, of, of loading. But what has happened with the virtual warehouse is a truck goes to the, because we've got a fleet of trucks available in our transport management system. A fleet of truck goes back to the plant without an order. It loads cement. It comes. You have 12 hours worth of a window to find a customer for that cement. And it most likely would, because we understand our daily sales volumes expected, we know there will be a customer for this truck. And sometimes we've delighted the customers, where a customer will place cement order at 10 o'clock, 12 o'clock, the trucks deliver cement. But we've selectively chosen our markets in terms of the export because we want to remain responsible in providing most of our cement in country. The only reason why we export is to secure the forex, a bit of a dollar currency, knowing and recognizing that we still are exposed in terms of forex since we import part of our input material like coal. So that's the balance we've had to strike. But if in country projected volumes were to die off, though I am still to see the day, if they were to die off, in most likelihood our appetite will be for the Eastern DRC, Goma Top, and the Burundi market. That's where we would be. But we have we have we have the responsibility, patriotic uh, responsibility, to stay in country. Our ambassadors in the media space to tell the people about the positive things that we are doing and positive things that we'll continue doing in the market going forward. We are this year, in fact next week we will be going through aggressive maintenance 
towards ramping up our plan to take advantage of the market that is out there in Rwanda. Last year, we decided to, to do part of it. This year, we are deciding to do fully, fully involved maintenance, which also includes uh, the upgrading of certain sections of the plant. So whenever people hear that you're going to be doing a maintenance, they're thinking you're going to a shutdown, total shutdown, and there's no cement supply. No. So it's been a combination of technology that we put in place versus also being responsible with price. Because during the market, you can go out and reduce the price of cement by half. You'll get the volumes. Everyone will buy your cement. But the question is, will you be have, having the enough profitability to sustain your debt that you are owing to the banks? The next question you talked about, uh, one year ago, Burundi uh, and DRC was accessed via distributors that were buying cement here and taking it across. I think that probably has died off because uh, in areas where we are commanding the marketplace, we have selected distributors in country. So they collect cement, then they take it across the borders and they sell it in country. And it's been a strategy that is working. Why? It's working for us because those people understand the marketplace, then they are able therefore to cover the last mile in terms of your supply value chain. Simebwa, strengthening Rwanda.